hello everyone welcome to my channel my name is sunil and today we will learn another uh, important question on system design that is how to design a cross reporting tool such as crosslytics instabug or sentry for more such videos please subscribe my channel and for any queries write in the comment box so let's first understand what is the use of cross reporting system or cross reporting tool so the main purpose of cross reporting tool is report the cross let's take our previous example let's consider that here uh, we found that there is a cross in our client side application that means uh, from uh, server side or from our dashboard we need to or we have a recurrent to see the crash to get the detailed information so so that we can work on the crashes so that means uh, here oh, we need also a dash dashboard where we can monitor the crashes so let's understand what is logger a lo logger system it logs the crashes locally and in some cases so we can say it is in servers but more often it is in uh, locally that means it is in client mobile app or uh, mobile app applications or in uh, client browser that means from server side there is we cannot understand or we cannot know that there is a crash so uh, logger system is more we can say suitable for development environment while the crash reporting tool will be more helpful in production environment so this will be associated with uh, the customers so as we found whenever there is any crash in your application the crash gets logged and sent to the centralized server then uh, we can see those report in the centralized server now let's understand different sections of this project so first we found that uh, whenever there is a crash it needs to be sent to the server that means we need a client sdk which will capture the crash and send it to the server then we need a server to store the crashes also we need a web or a dashboard to display the crash from the server so we have three types of projects or we can say three types of uh, modules or sections in this project the client sdk api uh, and uh, api for backend because client will interact with the api and similarly your dashboard will interact uh, with the server using api so api uh, will be required and also the dashboard uh, that which will be in web now let's see the complexity of this project let's say we have built this as a product and we have uh, we have lots of uh, organizations associated and or who are using our tool such as let's say microsoft walmart amazon so let's say that they are using our cross reporting tool so uh, all those organizations attached with the with this tool or re get registered with this tool and uh, we can uh, see that every organization have multiple projects one project can be let's say grocery app <coughs> uh, similarly they, they can there can be multiple projects then every project have multiple applications like for grocery application there, there can be android application there can be ios application also uh, there can be application uh, for uh, development environment uh, staging environment and production environment so if we see that application id is unique for uh, the whole oh, and uh, uh, if we see from bottom to top it is many to one relation Mo uh, lots of uh, many applications can uh, can be associated with single project and man many projects can be uh, associated with a single organization many organization can be associated with this uh, cross reporting system or cross reporting tools so 
even organization id will be unique project id will be unique everything all the ids needs to be unique now let's see the impact of the project let's uh, say we have 10000 organizations who are using our product uh, and uh, let's say that uh, one organization have two project and one project have two application that means we have 40000 applications onboarded or registered with our tool now what about the about the serviceability let's consider that one application have 1 million session per month and uh, let's consider 99% session are class free session that means we can say that 1% sessions are class free session a uh, class session that means 1 per, uh, 1% of 1 million session are class session which is 10000 class uh, session per month which comes around 333 class session per day per application as you, uh, this thing we have considered for one application and uh, we can uh, as we have 40,000 applications so uh, total we have 1 crore and 33, 33 lakh and 20,000 cross session per day uh, which is e equal, uh, equivalent to 154 crosses per second for the whole uh, product we are saying uh, for the cross reporting role that means uh, there will be 154 network requests at least to the server uh, to record exception and server needs to store those exceptions now uh, what about the read operations because these are write operations minimum write operation we have considered now what about the read operations let's say uh, one application have th three uh, owners or active owners here let's consider active owners uh, active owners who frequently opens the dashboard and uh, looks at the class so uh, that means 40000 applications will have 120000 users and uh, let's consider that one user opens or monitors the class is two times per day that means uh, overall we will get 240000 uh, read request for in a day for the uh, or uh, for the dashboard or to get the uh, cross information from the dashboard uh, which comes around uh, closely 2.777 requests per second now uh, what do you, uh, what is the amount of storage required because uh, here uh, where we need to store the user information or uh, organization information also we need to store the crashes uh, or crash information so what will the storage required let's uh, consider that uh, one one uh, uh, request that a uh, crash information request needs 2 kb why 2 kb because uh, it will consider uh, it will contain every uh, crash information will contain the stack trace of the crash uh, like method level, uh, method name, class name, all the details and where it is called. Also, it will contain few information related to the, to the crashed environment. Like what is the browser type or what is the uh, uh, mobile application version or OS version. So, uh, let's consider one request needs 2 KB roughly. So, 1 crore 33 lakh 20,000 requests. Uh, in a day that means it needs nearly 26.64 GB per day that means every day we are adding 26.64 GB additional storage so from this we found that it's a write heavy operation because uh, we have lots of write operations but uh, minimum minimum read operations and uh, every class information or the log information are independent uh, means uh, uh, we can say that we can get the all the detailed information from a single record or uh, so uh, hardly there will be any relationship between two records or um, uh, we can say relationship between any data now let's understand what will the tech stack required to build this so for a client side SDK 
let's consider the we will build android ios and web separately so for android we will use kotlin for ios uh, we will use swift and for web we can use javascript uh, similarly uh, for uh, we can consider more uh, hybrid environment like flutter uh, those things this is for client sdk and that client sdk is meant to cache the class or uh, uh, whenever there is a class happens it will just send, send it to the server to build build that sdk and uh, this client sdk will be uh, used as a library in uh, in this environment android ios and web now uh, as we need the, any api uh, we need api here we have considered golang server or uh, the uh, golang programming language will be used for the api so similarly additional thing you will find that we will be using redis cache authentic and uh, for uh, also we are considering this is a microservice environment uh, uh, we will uh, know all these details uh, later in this video uh, where we are considering that one authentication service will be required because we, we will having uh, registration and uh, login of uh, you the owners or the project owners and also uh, we will have re reporting service that is uh, or logging service logger service that is for uh, crash uh, uh, now uh, we need a dashboard for dashboard we will uh, we'll use react.js as it is uh, uh, we can say most popular and uh, similarly we will have uh, we have different uh, or, or we have the end, uh, alternative to react.js uh, which are we can say angular.js, vue.js, voltage.js but uh, due to popularity and uh, lots uh, due to availability of libraries uh, we will be using react.js as uh, our web dashboard now let's understand why we have used golang in our case uh, there are the different types of uh, so any server you can choose but uh, we found that uh, is a right heavy operation and uh, there are even in future we can have some sync mechanism so uh, if uh, if we uh, we can also use node.js or any other server but uh, if we compare between most popular that node.js server and golang server so uh, due to first three approaches uh, or first three points we are using uh, or we have considered golang that is its performance wise it's better scalability is better and also concurrency is uh, wise it's better this uh, due to these three uh, features are uh, I have uh, considered Go Golang will be our server for uh, development or uh, API development. Now uh, let's uh, consider our the database. So uh, when we found that uh, if we need to support the offline storage uh, in client side, uh, so that amount of data will be less. But uh, as we found that the database will increase like anything. Uh, every day because every day we need uh, 26 to 27 GB uh, in our server which is additional storage per day so the, that means uh, uh, and also it is we can say right heavy operation and uh, no relationship any between in data and then also we found that uh, we can have all those information in one JSON or uh, that uh, cross information which will be uh, we can say sufficient uh, so we have considered to use NoSQL database instead of SQL database and uh, also uh, here we have considered to use Cassandra uh, so, uh, due to few points which we will discuss later and in client SDK uh, or uh, in dashboard we can use any database uh, either SQL or NoSQL it doesn't matter so uh, uh, this is the comparison between two most popular uh, no SQL database, Cassandra and MongoDB. So, uh, the point number three that is scalability in Cassandra is very high and efficient. And then, point number four is read performance is highly efficient in Cassandra, it takes off one time. So, these three and four are the main key feature why we are using uh, we have considered Cassandra. And then, point number six, uh, six that Cassandra only supports JSON data format, and here. Uh, our data is only just JSON, nothing else. So uh, only these three, four, and six 
only these points we have considered Cassandra here. Now let's just uh, go through the requirement properly. Or uh, what is required for this uh, uh, cross reporting system? So first, it uh, we can say it reports application specific crashes. Means whenever there is a crash, it will report that. Also, we need to support offline crash reporting uh, uh, for mobile and devices. Sometimes there will be no internet and in that case if something gets uh, or the application gets crashed uh, as soon as there will be internet or whenever the application is launched next time we need to log that to the server Sim uh, similarly we found that we will have the dashboard where we need to register the application and uh, we need to display the rep reported crashes in dashboard that means we will have login session as well now let's uh, see the api details so uh, we'll have a register uh, uh, for a registration method. Oh, we'll have login. Uh, also, we'll have initialize the SDK, uh, uh, which will uh, give additional information. But where we can say it can uh, uh, the initialization of SDK can contain the application ID or package name, all those details uh, for uh, initializations and. Uh, also, it can return the auth token or authorization token uh, which will be used by this SDK to insert or report any crash. So, uh, in, uh, this initialized SDK will be, uh, will be one time uh, and then uh, insert crashes or uh, we can say record crash will be another API. Uh, get crashes uh, which will be used by the dashboard uh, to see the list of crashes and also it needs to support the pagination that's what uh, the page number limit those things will be required and uh, also sometimes we need to get the details of any crash so get crash details will be another api and as we found that uh, every day we are increasing the data database by 20 uh, uh, 26 or 27 gb uh, so at, uh, after a certain period we need to De delete those or uh, even uh, sometimes we need to delete the uh, delete the crashes based on our uh, requirements so we may need the delete api and if we see here uh, only get crashes are uh, get http get method uh, get a crashes and get a crash detail and uh, delete is the uh, http delete method while all others are post http post method and uh, if we see here majorly point number one two uh, five six and sometimes seven uh, this will be used by our dashboard while point uh, point number three and four will be used by the client sdk so uh, the first rule of uh, any scalable design is always try to avoid the single point of failure and if we see overall uh, uh, in our design it becomes something like this where we have one client sdk uh, in client SD, uh, sdk we will make a call to the api service and uh, after getting information it will update the uh, client sdk and also uh, this api service will update the our database now let's uh, understand what, what this client SDK will contain. The, so client SDK will contain the executor service and one uh, small database inside it, uh, where uh, this database will be used for offline storage of crashes, and uh, this executor service will be used to get crash information from the database sent to the server, and after getting a response, update the database. Similarly. Also, it will have uh, additional uh, thing like uh, uh, in case of uh, offline, let's say a crash happened in offline. So, whenever the application comes online, that time it will again fetch. So, those listeners, it will have uh, maybe internet listener or bootstrap listener, all those things it will have, the executor service will have. And uh, it will be the point of contact for database. Uh, which data that is client uh, client side SDK or client side uh, database 
and that address can be any it can be no sql or sql it doesn't matter much and uh, how it will record the class if we see uh, that executor service uh, we need to write something like this uh, uh, every program has a different way to handle or uh, to collect the class not handle collect the class uh, this is in uh, jvm where uh, we'll find that uh, there is one thread dot on code exception handler so by def uh, by default th there is one uh, separate exception handler is, is attached that's why the uh, information goes to the jvm uh, so we need to extend this class and use the uh, set default exception handler to work uh, to our this global exception handler so uh, if we see in inside uh, init method we have written thread dot set default exception handler to our handler and whenever there is any class happens that time uh, if we see that there is one on code exception uh, method is written it will be called and all those information will come here so uh, there i have written that to do log exception so there you need to just uh, log the exception or send to the server so does that mean that it will not cross the app? yeah it will the, uh, it will cross the app, but it will record the exception so the cross cross the app, uh, happens at the next line that uh, root handler dot uh, on code exception so uh, it will uh, tell the jvm that uh, do it in your own way but before that we have already logged it similarly different programming language will have different mechanism to set the exceptional handler now uh, if we see our design uh, the previous design it became something like this so client client will make call to api and api will make call to database or api will store information in database and uh, here we will find that um, in our system uh, or while we are designing we will learn something or uh, uh, these key components we will learn dns load balancer api gateway memory cache and uh, database cluster those things we will learn now if, if we see that uh, every uh, every server uh, it's a physical server okay? so it has an one uh, ip static ip every server has so uh, ipv4 or ipv6 anything but uh, let's consider about ipv4 so uh, something like 192.160. something so uh, even this uh, 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 192 or 16 those are not fixed those can also change so we can say there are only really four different type of uh, or different combinations of numbers we can get that is static ip so, uh, and uh, if we are saying that client will make call to this server that means client needs to make call to this static ip or a static public ip okay, uh, to uh, establish a connection now let's say we have 100 clients that means uh, they need to make connection to the server by this public ip in that case let's say something goes wrong with one server and we need to replace the server that that means we can have another or that server will have another ip another public ip and now here you can see that it is written 192.108 starter.99 so the public ip changed in this case if the clients have the url like 192.108 something then uh, while upgradation or while changing the server we cannot inform the client to change the ip that means uh, the uh, it cannot scale or uh, it cannot uh, it will have maintenance problem and uh, there are different uh, uh, scenarios when we need to change the server maybe uh, due to we can say uh, the server uh, physical limitations or uh, maybe say security threat uh, we are changing the server there, uh, or maybe sometimes we need to add more servers so uh, in 
those cases we found that if we if the client have the static ip instead of www.xyz.com if the client have 192. Dot or something like this the then the client is again needs to upgrade whenever we need to upgrade the server or change the server which is very painful so uh, uh, in that case it is also not scalable so uh, in that case instead of client using static ip directly the client ID, uh, client needs to use some dynamic ip or uh, we can say the uh, if client use some readable name like www.xyz.com and that xyz.com ma mapped with the static ip by uh, by some external party then we can say that it can scale because the only client needs to remember this xyz.com and the yellow part or the static ip can change so this is where the dns comes to the picture we can consider something like that uh, dns is uh, like another type of uh, server which help you which will help you to resolve the mapping of the dynamic or uh, or readable name to static ip that actually uh, or uh, it will uh, take the xyz.com as input and it will return you the static ip of the server in that case and uh, when it returns you the after it returns the static ip of the uh, server then the client or the user will make a call to that server in that case if we want to change the uh, server uh, or upgrade the server to a different one then the dns will have the new information so again the user will make a call to the dns then dns will give the new ip or new static ip to the client and then user will make call to the uh, new static ip server or new server so uh, uh, amazon, that amazon route 53 it is one example of uh, dns this is how uh, this is what the dns hierarchy we see or uh, generally we write uh, www.google.com or uh, buckley.com or .cs so if we see there is top level domain there is second level domain and sub domain so this is the hierarchy of dns and this is how the dns exactly works from client first it, uh, client will make a call dns resolver dns resolver will try to fetch the information from root server if it is not available with the root server it will try to find out from tld server that is dot com dot those are different tld servers then uh, it will uh, try to uh, find out from authorized authoritative server in the and uh, finally dns resolver will try uh, will uh, resolve the problem for you and it will give you the static ip now we found that our design became something like this where users will make a call first make a call to the dns and then after getting the ip of the actual server users will make a call to that server okay. and we discussed that always you need to avoid the single point of failure now let's say that we have got 100,000 users then we got 1 million users that means number of requests to the server will increase and every uh, server is a hardware or uh, is a physical machine so at a certain uh, period we need to upgrade the server or we need to add more servers because one server cannot handle all the requ requests at a time so uh, let's say uh, now we need to add two more servers server 2 or server 3 if the dns have those ip of that physical machine of server 1 then adding more servers will be difficult because now we are saying that we we want to 
share this load to multiple servers instead of having one server we want to share that load to multiple things how we can have multiple ips attached to the dns and so uh, that means we need to balance the load let's say we are getting 1 million requests at a time that means uh, we need to just uh, divide the request into 33 percent for each server so there, there are different <coughs> lots of different uh, uh, mechanism we need to adapt to balance the load or let's say one server goes down then the next two server needs to fulfill the requirement this this is where the load balancer came to the picture that means now the dns uh, will have the ip of load balancer not the actual server and this servers are clubbed or uh, these servers are attached to the load balancer that means uh, user will get the static ip for load balancer instead of that server so after introducing load balancer your our design becomes something like this so let's understand what the main purpose is load balancer so its purpose is to distribute the load or we can say by balancing the traffic between multiple backend systems key what are the key features we can uh, we can configure different routes for different backend systems also we get a static ip address for the load balances and endpoint uh, which is generally not available with the api gateway and also we can say that we can configure health checks which is important for the load balancing so these are the uh, key phases available to the load balancer and this is how the load balancing works user will make uh, user will get the ip of load balancer now a load balancer will decide to which server it will distribute the load and then let's say that server will have connection to the database that is different now uh, we found that our design became something like this for a load balancer will distribute the load to the servers but in our case when we are saying that server right side if we see uh, that uh, so server will have logger mechanism or log logger services also it will have login services and it will have authentication service so in that case we are saying that uh, one uh, server is doing everything uh, and uh, also uh, 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 means it is not scalable so some services ca ca can be we can say uh, used less some services are more we can say logger services are more uh, while login or usage of login is or uh, is less but while uh, what uh, authentication usage of us in the authentication more so instead of uh, using one service we can go for microservices because one service is not scalable and also it is not not cost efficient so uh, when i saying that we will go for microservice that means we will have logger a separate service that login or uh, user sorry, is separate service authentication will be separate service now here we need api gateway because when we are saying that we have got a tra traffic how we can say that this re request will go to which microservice so api gateway decides that that means uh, uh, instead of uh, when we are saying that we will have multiple uh, different type of ser uh, servers uh, which will uh, or multiple different type of services so api gateway will manipulate or will, will uh, evaluate we can say evaluate the api request and delegate the task to the respective server so it works on api level for microservices 
we can say uh, the main purpose is to uh, is targeted towards api management so below are key features of uh, api gateway which is not available to the load balancer so we can implement rate limiting busting limits we can do request validation and uh, request response mapping cloud api gateway allows exports or import cross api platform using swagger spec also it allows caching responses so these are some key features of api gateway why we will be using api gateway now if we see the api gateway where it will be belong so now our dns uh, if we say user user will first make call the dns after getting the ip of load balancer user will make call to the load balancer load balancer will make call to the api gateway uh, we can have multiple api gateways uh, which we are saying that a cluster of api gateways when uh, when there will be more or the request will be more we need more api gateways so all those cluster will be mapped to the load balancer so load balancer will redirect the task to the gateway now gateway will evaluate and redirect or uh, not redirect we can say delegate the task to different server for login it will send to the login server now we found that for logger server logger server which is for uh, event tracking uh, we need more servers that means if, uh, also there we can have another load balancer on top of that logger server so, but that api gateway will uh, redirect those requests to there and in on top of that api gateway can handle the uh, authentication or author authorization session And uh, when we are saying that uh, load balancer, generally load balancer will be uh, we, we used to balance the loads for similar servers. But here, uh, if we see logger server is different, login server is different, authentication session is handler, handler is different. That's why get, gateway is for specific servers. It is to delegate uh, specific servers, but uh, load balancer is to balance the load between same servers. Or, uh, or similar environment where the gateway you can delegate so we can say uh, login uh, server can have different uh, environment and logger server can have different environment uh, where logger uh, server can be built in uh, our uh, golang where uh, while login server can be built in nodejs it it is possible now if we see here we have authentication uh, session handler which is which makes call to the database now we need a memory case why that uh, as we are saying the authentication server is making call to the database let's say for every request we need to uh, check the authentication if the request is uh, valid then we will store the information other is not in that case as we have lots of write operations that means authentication session needs to validate the token and the validation will happen by getting information from database so there will be lots of read operations in the database and uh, and also we found that the token will not expire immediately in that case unnecessarily we are adding the load to the database So there we need a cache mechanism where we will say that this uh, authentic server we will first try to fetch information or try to validate information from cache if it is available in cache then it is fine if it is not available then it will make a call to the database to get the information something like this uh, where uh, in that case we can reduce the 99 percent of load from the database for the read unnecessary read and uh, one example of uh, this uh, using the this cache will be that uh, authorization or auth authentication uh, 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 where we, we can say we can in memory cache we are using generally redis cache in server side so this is how the cache mechanism will work so server will first try to get the information from cache if it is not available then it will 
get 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 it from the database and it will update the cache where uh, where the, the cache uh, we are saying that is memory cache so uh, 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 means this memory cache will be highly efficient or uh, it will be faster because it will be like something key and value pair okay so the memory cache is used to store frequently accessed data in memory so that application can be responsive to the user also uh, it is it has the capacity to uh, de designate how long you want to keep the data and which data to evict first those are additional features and one key thing to understand is that memory cache is not the replacement of database that means it is it will be used to store small amount of data which is frequently accessed and less frequently expires now when we uh, see uh, see that the, the, our uh, authentication service will have one cache mechanism okay now the next part is the logger server uh, as we have lots of cras needs to be logged that means the uh, uh, crashes needs to be stored in database where we found that logger if we say that there will be one database the logger will make call to the database so up to certain uh, point that database cannot scale because it needs more storage and also the request will be more it's, similarly we have different uh, servers like login server the in those cases uh, we found that multi lots of uh, we can say that logger server is a group of server if they have the point of uh, um, that uh, we can say contact information of database it will be not scalable and we cannot replace it or we cannot uh, grow uh, as we found that write operations are we can say 154 requests per second for our uh, product so we need a database scaling or we need to scale the database as well that means uh, we are saying that we will have a cluster of database where uh, uh, that database and its replica will be there replica can be used uh, let's say uh, database get crashed then replica can be used to get the information also uh, we can say that uh, there are different strategy we can take to balance the load to the database like a write can happen to some uh, database and uh, read can happen from the replica so the database and its replica will be there and now another challenge we found that as we need to increase the information based or the crash uh, or the database based on uh, in the on a group like uh, organization group so we got a crash for any applications or any particular organization that will increase so the, uh, we we need a scaling uh, sorry we need a we need shading Shed, uh, shading concept used to for uh, scaling the database or you can say increasing in the storage or uh, even uh, there are lots of Hash mechanism will be uh, used or partitioning is used to properly group the uh, database and also we can say to increase the storage and overall we will also we need a load balancers of database which will which can just distribute the task uh, between different types of da database because uh, um, this session is uh, let's say uh, this part is for uh, logger database similarly we will have different uh, for user database or authentication database so uh, there will be also one load balancer which will distribute the traffic like uh, login session needs to be logged in uh, that database and uh, cross reporting those things needs to be put in different database also we can say that uh, there can be multiple environment of database this logger or logging uh, server uh, or the, the logging database can as we discussed that can uh, that will be 
you uh, or no sql will be used for that or cassandra will be used, used for that but uh, user information can be sql database that's why uh, the load balance uh, the database load balancer will be required and if we see the overall design something it will uh, become something like this where i don't know we found that uh, there will be load balancer then load balancer will connect to the api uh, gateway clusters then api uh, gateway cluster will distribute the traffic not uh, to different services uh, based on the api so we can say api gateway will manage the apis now again those servers can have uh, load balancer and that authentication uh, session handler that will get information from memory cache which is uh, one example will is redis cache is one example of memory cache and uh, if we see here that database load balancer means all these server will have the uh, contact point of database load balancer and that now database load balancer uh, have the cluster of databases oh, the topmost is we have uh, mentioned a user database cluster the uh, bottom most is right uh, most and bottom some that logger database cluster the logger uh, uh, which we dis uh, discussed that we need no sql data similarly user database cluster can have no sql or the sql anything so uh, the overall system becomes like this or or more complicated Thank you.